3D infusion is something I only realized was actually a thing not that long ago, and I'm surprised at how intuitive and logical it is. So let's take a look at some of the individual aspects of the 3D side of fusion, the nodes that go with them, and how they all work together. Stick about for when I show you how I use the 3D side of fusion in my videos, because it's actually simpler and cleverer than the rest of what I'm about to show. Take what you learn here and you can use that to do more complex things in 3D, like where I'm replacing the edge of a table in this advert I'm working on here. Starting off, when you're doing anything in 3D in fusion, you will need to place down a render node, which you can find right here in the toolbar. This works the same way as something like the shapes render node, but instead converting your 3D stuff into a 2D output that can then be put into the rest of the node tree. Therefore, in this blank fusion composition, I'll connect the render node straight into the output. Now I have this ready, we can start with the interesting stuff. Let's add a shape 3D node from the toolbar here and connect it to the renderer 3D node. Now the viewer doesn't look 3D, but that's because we're looking at the output of the media out node after the 3D has been rendered. So to see the 3D view of this, you want to put the closest node to the renderer on viewer 1, which you can do just by selecting that node and pressing 1. You will of course need to have the dual viewers on for this. Now this is more what I'm looking for. I can rotate the viewer with shift plus right click, move with middle mouse button and zoom with control plus scroll. Next, with the shape node selected in the inspector, I can now change the shape being outputted from this node to something like this cube. If we move to the transform tab here, we can now also change the positioning, rotation and scale of this 3D shape like I've done here. Okay, so I've got my shape, but to make this look 3D in the actual output, I could really do with some 3D camera movement. So logically, let's add a camera to the scene, but hold up. First, we'll want to add a merge node from here as so, connecting it in. This allows us to connect the camera node into the 3D space. Now we have that merge in place, let's connect the camera 3D node up from the toolbar into this merge 3D. Now, do you remember what I said about always having the closest node to the renderer going to viewer 1? Well, now we've got that merge node in, let's switch it to that. You won't see a difference here, but with anything else except cameras, we wouldn't have been able to see it in this 3D area without doing this. So it is good practice. At the minute, all we can now see is a nice close-up of the cube. So to fix this, you can move this camera just like we did the cube. However, an easier way to move things is to use the controls in this 3D viewer window. Here, selecting the camera node, I can use these arrows to drag my camera left, right, up and down. Should I want to rotate it, I can then go up here, selecting the rotate icon instead, and now I have rotation controls the same. When using these aspects, be sure to select the line itself to move just the axis it's showing, otherwise you'll start rotating the camera all over the place. There are other elements we can get involved in the 3D space, like the text 3D node. Let's add this into the mix by dragging it from the toolbar and connecting it as well into the merge 3D node. If you're looking for other fun 3D nodes, then using the shortcut shift plus space and typing in 3D gives yourself the full list. Now, some of these are much more complex and won't work the way I've shown so far in this video, however, generally the ones that end with 3D should work the same as these. Now, if you're like me, I'm looking at this and going, that's great and all, but everything's just white, so I can't actually really tell what's going on in the final output. Well, that's where the materials come in. Whilst there is quite a bit to this aspect, simply you can change the color by selecting a node, coming to this materials tab and changing the color here. On the text 3D node, this is different though, and you can change the color here, just like any other text node. Okay, we're nearly there. Remember when I said we want that moving camera to make things properly look 3D? Well, let's get to that moving part. I'm sure if you're watching this, you're familiar with the concept of keyframing and how to use it, which I think I have three videos on now covering different aspects. And so you're gonna to want to create a keyframe for each. All the same, to create a keyframe, just select the diamond icon next to each value, alter it, then go to a different spot doing the same with the ending position or value. As you can now see, the movement on my camera is keyframed. Here, I'm also going to keyframe the rotation of the view so that everything stays in the camera angle the whole time. Now, this does look kind of interesting, but it doesn't look 3D, because even though we've changed the color of these items, there's no lighting in the scene. First of all, let's get our spotlight in with the Spotlight 3D node, connecting it to the merge as with the others. Now immediately, we can't see this taking any effect, so quickly open the render node in the inspector, just by clicking on it, open the lighting drop down, enabling the lighting checkbox. After moving this light around a bit, I can now see its effect, with a bit more depth in my scene. As a bonus, this video has shown you some great stuff, but all this is not generally how I use the 3D side of Fusion. I prefer creating a graphic I like with the shape nodes, 
or just by importing an image and then bringing that into 3D with the image plane 3D node. You can find this by pressing shift plus space and searching for image plane 3D. With this, I can take my normal 2D graphics, input them into this and then place them in the 3D world. This image plane 3D is how I make 3D infusion actually look good. So your 3D effect can look as good as the graphics you make or download for it. 3D infusion can be used for loads of stuff too like this advert I'm working on where I'm replacing part of a table using 3D camera tracking. So take the basics of what you've learned here and make them into something incredible.